Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Unlock Show. I'm your host, Tracy Wilson. Friday morning here in Australia. And uh, it's been a little while since I've tuned in with you guys on a Friday, but I'm pretty excited to be back this Friday morning with a super special guest with me today. Uh, you guys may have seen... Um, if you've been watching the show for quite some time, this is a, I'm going to say, a, a guest that I've had on before. He shared some amazing stuff with us, and I don't even know how long ago it was now, maybe six months or so ago, but I actually asked Dr. Brian Brown to come back and uh, be, a, be a guest for us again today, and I've created this very special show. The reason that I've done this is because since having Dr. Brian on our show earlier on in the year, we were talking about how to optimize your health, and Gosh, you guys all know what's going on in the world right now. You know, optimizing our health is super, super important. And uh, after have after that particular show with uh, Dr. Brian, then it really, really got me thinking. And I started doing a little bit more research and getting a little bit curious about what is it that he's up to? What is he doing? And that led me down a path to kind of explore a little bit more. So what I asked him to do is I wanted him to come on the show today. And I wanted both he and I to share with you our first, his firsthand experience as to how he's got into helping other people optimize their health through the understanding of genetics, like the genesis, the basis of everything that we are about. So how did he actually get into that? And he's got an amazing story, which he will share with you today. And then secondly, I wanted to share with you my experience of actually working with Dr. Brian Brown and his team and what it has actually done for me personally. So I want to uncover all of that in today's show. So if you're somebody who's um, like I was, who would wake up in the morning and I don't know for how many years, the last two or three years, I would say to my husband, my God, I've had, I just feel like I've had the best sleep, but yet I wake up and I just feel as if my battery has not recharged. And I would say this over and over again. That's the way I would explain what was going on with me um, to others. And that's, oh, gosh, you just, you know, you need more sleep or something. You work too hard. Um, little did I know that there were some other underlying uh, reasons as to why all of these things were happening. And that's just one small component which we're going to uncover today. And you're going to hear how that has uh, impacted me, what I've, what differences, you know, what changes have I made, and what am I actually doing now to improve that situation. So I want to say good morning morning to uh, Dr. Brian. He is coming at us, for, uh, coming to us today from Jacksonville, Tennessee in America. Um, as you know, I'm here on the Gold Coast of Australia. And uh, his history is um, is vast. You know, he's been in the in the health space for uh, a number of decades now. So I want to hand over to him for a moment. I'm going to get him to explain to you his background, how he's even come to be so passionate about what he's doing these days and uh, what has led him down this path. So welcome to the show or welcome back to the show, uh, Dr. Brian. It's great to have you here. Uh, great to be here, Tracy. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for that introduction. And uh, it, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about, I know that there's a, a kind of a story as to, you know, your medical background. So you started out in the mainstream medical field and then, you know, a number of things happened. And in fact, your story goes right back to your childhood. So let's give everybody a bit of a glimpse into yeah. how did that how did that come about? What was going on with you and how have you come to be doing what you're doing today? Yep. Great question. So, um, yeah, I've been practicing 24 years now. Um, it's kind of hard to believe. Um, it, it'll be 24 years actually this coming January. And um, I, I primarily practice psychiatry. Uh, I'm dual board certified in psychiatry and family practice, but primarily have done psychiatry my entire career. Um, that is until about, um, about 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I decided out of just a professional frustration and a personal health frustration, I'll get to that in a second, um, that I couldn't find the answers to what was going on with clients. I couldn't find the answers to what was going on with myself through mainstream traditional medicine. So I decided to switch gears and I, and I retrained, reskilled and functional and integrative medicine. Now, integrative medicine is really interesting in that we're, we're kind of East meets West, uh, so to speak. So we're alternative, but we don't necessarily, uh, as the saying goes, throw the baby out with the bathwater. If there's a need for a pharmaceutical, we'll use it and we're not scared to use it. 
Uh, but I will tell you the, the number of pharmaceuticals that I, that I prescribe now compared to what I used to prescribe is much, much less. Um, as you said, as you alluded to, you know, my story started when, when I was a child and, um, and it actually started at age five. At age five, I was a curious kid, I always was a curious kid. And I had this fascination with electricity. Um, I can't tell you the depth of that fascination, but I can tell you that I remember vividly being electrocuted at age five. Um, and, and, I, and even being electrocuted then, I was still curious about, you know, what caused my hand to be burned because I had uh, second degree burns in the palm of my hand. You know, I, I was curious about what caused that pain in my body. And that's this invisible force. And I was curious about this, uh, this out of body experience that I had where I saw myself above my body and saw my mother rescuing me. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but I, uh, I started having night terrors and um, I, I had night terrors. And for those that may not know what night terrors are, they're kind of like really bad nightmares, except there's no dream. You have all the physical symptoms, the heart racing, the shortness of breath, the sweating, the tremors and things like that. But no dream. You can't remember any dream. And I was having that starting right after the electrocution and carried that diagnosis for 40 years. Uh, and then one day while I was driving on the interstate, <laughs> I nearly wrecked my vehicle. Um, and immediately a thought came over me. Uh, you need to drive to your friend's office. So I have a friend that's a healthcare professional. He's in cardiology. He was the closest office I could think of. So I drove to his office and it was a good thing that I did because long story short, over the coming days, uh, I did the, the executive cardiac workup and um, my heart, it come to find out my heart was stopping multiple times per night. The thing is, is that those times that my heart stopped correlated exactly with those night terrors that I had. So I found myself within a very short period of time in the hospital, having a pacemaker implanted in my chest. So you may think, oh, okay, you got the pacemaker implanted, everything's fixed, and you sailed happily off into the sunset. Not exactly so. Um, I actually, the, the nightmares or the night terrors stopped at that point. And that was a good thing. Um, but it was almost like I was in adrenaline withdrawals because you see every time my heart would stop, my body would dump massive amounts of adrenaline to jumpstart my heart back. Well, if, if you know anything about adrenaline, it's good in short doses. It's not good over the long haul. And it had caused a whole host of medical problems uh, such as weight gain up to 390 pounds, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, the list goes on and on. I could sit here for, for an hour and tell you all the symptoms I had. I'm not going to bore you with that. But the bottom line is I had a lot of physical and mental health challenges uh, even after the pacemaker was put in. Uh, so I set out on this journey through mainstream medicine. I was still practicing mainstream medicine at the time to figure out what was going on. And I couldn't find any answers. And then it dawned on me one day while I was seeing a client. I'm like, holy cow. The, I don't even have the answers for my own client because this was a client that mm -hmm. I'd been seeing for years and they were no better now than they were 10 years ago. And I was like, we're just putting band-aids on things. So yeah. I decided at that point, transition into functional medicine, leave traditional practice. And that's what I did. I closed my office down, transitioned into functional integrative medicine, and I've never looked back. Um, so that's how I got to, um, got into alternative medicine. That's the story up to this point. There's a pretty radical, um, well, I suppose shift, you know, when you think, gosh, I've been in this environment for such a long time. It's what I know. It's what, you know, what I've been, been taught or to understand that this is the way to go. And then realizing that, hang on a minute, you know, what I'm doing actually to try and solve the problem that I'm facing right now. And actually what I'm trying to do with a lot of my clients is, isn't actually working. I need to, I need to try and explore um, alternative solutions. So, you know, and then that's led you down 
down uh, this path of genetics. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about kind of how that's come about. Like how have you, because again, you know, you, you start off very wide in the, the realm of um, general practitioner. And then, you know, as you've, um, as you've progressed, you know, moving into that functional and yep. integrative medicine side of things, and then getting very, very specific around genetics. Yep. Why did you go down that path? What was it that led you to that? Yeah. So um, in functional medicine training, they teach you to to go after the root cause. You're always looking for the root cause of the problem, whereas in traditional medicine, you're not necessarily looking for the root cause. They 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 think they are, but their root causes are way up here when in reality, the root causes are buried deep. And um, so in functional medicine, I found myself going from here and traditional medicine down to here, but I still felt that there was a depth that we weren't quite getting to. And, um, and I started doing some research and was at a conference, at a functional medicine conference, got introduced to um, a chief scientist of, of a genetics testing company. Uh, he and I struck up a conversation and he said, why, why don't let, let's just do some genetic testing on you and kind of show you what this is about. So I said, fine, let's do it. And I did the genetic testing, got the results back. Uh, it was quite cumbersome. Wasn't quite sure what to do with the results. I actually called this uh, PhD scientist back, this chief scientist mm -hmm. for this company, because uh, he had given me his personal cell. I called him back. We kind of muddled through things over the coming uh, over the coming weeks. And uh, he was able to kind of uh, cobble together a plan for me. Uh, genetics testing companies, that's not really their forte is putting together plans. They just give you the results and you kind of run with them. But anyway, he helped me. He was kind enough to help me. And uh, so over, over about four to six months, I started noticing that e even though with what I'd already done with functional medicine, I'd seen some improvement. It's like things didn't quite stick. It's like I would try one thing and it would work for a little while and then I would slip back and I would try a new thing and then it would work for a little while and I would slip back. And I did this over and over and over for years until I found uh, genetics and epigenetic testing. And when I started working with the genetics and it, dawn it dawned on me, it's like, well, this makes sense because mm -hmm. this is the, the true root cause of everything we're born with these genetics. That's what make, makes us uniquely us. We receive mm -hmm. half of our genetics from our mother and half from our father and boom, we're formed. And mm -hmm. it just made sense to me that this is the base foundational level of everything that we need to be focusing on. Um, and I was thinking, well, where was this years ago when I transitioned into functional medicine? And, and, and I, I beat myself up a little bit. And then I found out that Oh my gosh, it's a brand new field. In fact, um, the term epigenetics uh, came out in 1946 uh, by an embryologist, believe it or not. And it wasn't mm -hmm. until 2008 that scientists could agree on a definition of epigenetics. And shortly thereafter, epigenetics, the field of epigenetics exploded and all this research started being done. I just looked these numbers up um, a couple of days ago for, for my podcast. And if you look up cancer on Google Scholar, mm -hmm. it turns up like 1.61 million search results in Google Scholar. That, that means there's that many research articles written. Uh, if you do the same search for epigenetics, it's only like 410,000. So there's a stark difference there in the amount of research that we have for cancer and the, the amount of research that we have for epigenetics. It's growing. It's rapidly growing. Um, and, 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 Epigenetics, for those that may not be familiar with the term, epigenetics means the, the modifiable components of your gene. Uh, so mm -hmm. there are genes that control the color of your hair, the color of your eyes, the color of your skin, uh, those types of things. And those are not modifiable genes. So there's not many epigenetics involved in that that we know of. But there are epigenetics involved, uh, those modifiable genes involved in things, say, like depression or anxiety, or weight management, weight gain, uh, energy levels, uh, mitochondrial health, detoxification, inflammation, so on and so forth. So uh, it just began to fascinate me, and I, and I dove deep into it. 
And I realized at that point that clinically now knowing this information, how could I start anywhere else other than with epigenetics first? Mm -hmm. It just made sense. So I started using it with clients and my new clients. I, I was using it with existing clients, but it wasn't the same because I'd already been working with them for years. It's very similar to my story. We introduced epigenetics in the middle of things. Um, but I started working with new clients and I started with epigenetics first and I let the epigenetics dictate where we went with therapies, where we went with further diagnostic workup and so on and so forth. So that's how that's how I got into epigenetics. And, you know, that's kind of in a nutshell why I continue using that today. You know, one of the things that uh, and, and that's a fascinating story. And I mean, I, I you know, given our show is only like an hour long, there's so much um, over the, the term of, of me getting to know you and being part of, um, you know, working with you to understand my own genetic profile. Mm. Uh, I know there's so many stories and so many uh, things that you could share, and we've just got to try and do that in a really condensed space of time. So I want to kind of kick up a gear and just give everybody a bit more of a... Um, I suppose, an insight into why I went down this path. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, you know, knowing um, or getting to know Dr. Brian through uh, him being on the show and just kind of really understanding. I knew Brian right, previously, but had him on the show and then really started to understand, well, what does he do and how does he do that? And why is he doing that? And what what difference does it actually make? And why should I even really care about genetics? You know, they are what they are. Um, it, it was was really, I suppose, I didn't really have... Uh, give it that much time or thought um, prior to, to prior to now. But I'm so pleased that I did because after going down the path that I actually did, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about this um, shortly too, because Brian's got a, another round of his boot, his uh, Gene Hack boot camp coming out. So I was lucky enough to be in his very first uh, Gene Hack boot camp, which happened earlier this year. So taking all of the knowledge, the information, the experiences that he's had, and being able to put them into a program that actually helps people like me, who has no medical, I mean, I've got a lot of medical people in my, my family, but personally no medical background you know if I was something wrong with me of course I go to the doctor usually they'd say here you go go home take a Panadol you'll be right mate um was kind of the scenario so you know it, that was really my extent of um of of medical knowledge but then going through the boot camp and really understanding you know how does this impact us what difference does that make why should I really even care what is genetics what is epigenetics what are the things that you because you would think the average person would think, oh, well, your genetics, yeah, they, they are my genetics, can't change those, they are what they are. Mm -hmm. But then understanding the epigenetic side of things that you actually can switch good switches on and switch bad switches off by doing various different things that make um, such a huge difference to some of the areas that for me were an issue. The other thing that I'm going to say is that, again, I wouldn't have gone down this um, path previously until I really you know, got to know you. But what it's also done for me is getting that genetic profile, get, getting my genetics back. Like you were saying, when you first got it back from uh, from the guy, you know, some some years ago, and you were like looking at this genetic profile and going, what the heck is this? A whole lot of numbers. I don't understand any of this. I need a scientist to try and decipher what's going on. You know, I can recall getting my genetic profile back and kind of reading it and not really understanding what I'm looking at here. Now, after doing both the boot camp and then spending some more time with you in your accelerator program, I now understand exactly how to read that. But not only that, understand like why, when I mentioned earlier, sleep, why was that an issue? Why was I sleeping all night? It felt like I was having a super deep sleep. I should be energized and ready to go. But then actually realizing that when my genetics came back, my body doesn't methylate well. You know, it just yes. doesn't do that. So I wake up in the morning with my battery only 10% charged. That is a big issue. You know, so I'm thinking to myself, holy cow, imagine if my battery actually did, you know, charge to even 20 or 30 or 50%. Mm -hmm. Gosh, how much more, um, you know, optimal could my life be if I were able to do that? So, so understanding that, and I had no idea. And then the other part, you know, understanding, and again, this is something that, you know, we go, oh, it's hereditary, um, you know, arthritis, achy bones, um, 
uh, you know, all of those sorts of things. Oh, well, it's just a family thing. It's 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 um, hereditary would be the what everybody would say. And then when my genetics came back, it was like, oh, right. Well, that's exactly why <laughs> I have an issue with that because, you know, now I understand that I've inherited that inflammation gene from mm -hmm. both of my parents. Now, when I got all of that back, guys, I wanted you guys to understand this because it's so, so, like for me personally, I feel extremely, um, well, I feel a lot more empowered about understanding my health, understanding how my, what my genetic makeup is, even why I, uh, why I do some certain things and don't do some certain, certain things. And given the current climate, I also understand or I can make much better informed decisions for me about my health and my situation so um you guys can read into that however you will but um you know i'm just going to say that that has really uh provided me with some rock solid science about not just you know the general population but about me personally and whether or not you know i should do or don't do certain things so um that's been amazing that I've uh, that I've learned about that, and uh, secondly that I'm now able to make very very informed decisions that are based on my own genetics. And like you say, it's at that very um, at that foundational level. And everybody knows it doesn't matter what it is that you you're doing in life. If you're trying to create something on top of a very unstable foundation, you're going to have some major issues down the track. Mm -hmm. So what kind of dawned on me as I went through, um, was going through the program, I'm sort of thinking to myself, wow, this would, like, why is, why don't my doctors do this? Why haven't they got this information to me sooner? And secondly, my God, this would have been amazing if I'd been able to get this sort of information. I know it's relatively new and it's developing and all that sort of stuff, but boy, oh boy, it would have been amazing if I'd been able to get this for my kids when they mm. were little. From a standpoint of being able to understand you know, when they are ill, what are some of the things that I should and shouldn't be giving that, giving to them? Because it actually impacts their health from a genetic, at a genetic level. So I know that you're doing some amazing work in terms of helping adults uh, understand their genetics and then the family and then potentially even down the track thinking about how do parents better understand the genetics of their children. I know that's something that's in the pipeline for you and coming, but mm -hmm. can you explain like why would that be to me being, you know, my logical brain just tells me, hey, that would have been such an awesome thing to know and understand. Um, is it? And should we really, you know, like how soon is um, soon enough to get this type of genetic testing from a health standpoint? Yep. No, great question. Uh, along those lines, I've got a, a few comments about what you just said. Number mm -hmm. one, first comment is you're talking like a professional. OK, and oh, thanks. No, no, no. Seriously. And and if, if you remember when I said, OK, when you start this boot camp process, you're going to come out the other end of the boot camp in five days and you're going to understand more than 90 percent of health professionals in the world when it comes to epigenetics, especially practicing everyday clinical practice, practicing health professionals. That's number one. Number two, you said something along the lines of this was meaningful for me because it was uniquely mine. It was my genetics. And I think the problem with, with mainstream medicine um, and to some degree, some, some aspects of even uh, alternative medicine, um, we tend to approach it from more of a, a, a categorized rubber stamp approach and, and healthcare wellness care should be very, very, very individualized. I mean, our our genetics are as unique as our fingerprints, right? Mm -hmm. So if if our fingerprint is uniquely ours and we can visibly see that, then this invisible force that's in us that we can't see at the at the at the microscopic level, at the atomic level, um, is is something that's even more powerful, and and we need to harness that power. So that leads me in my, into my third uh, point. You mentioned methylation. And, mm. and I'm going to use this as an example to answer you, the question that you brought up. Um, so with methylation, the reason that I feel like we should start as young as possible, 
uh, using methylation as an example. For those of you guys who may not know or be familiar with what methylation is, uh, methylation invo involves mostly B vitamins. B vitamins have or should have attached to them a methyl group. You don't need to under understand what that is. Just think of it like um, if you've ever seen the movie Minions, the cartoon Minions, and these little Minions are always, well, most of the time helping. They're bringing things to, uh, you know, to, to help out with the task at hand. And sometimes they're not so helpful. And we'll get to that one in a minute. Uh, but you've got this minion and he's carrying a methyl group and he escorts it across the threshold of the cell to the internal components of the cell. And that methyl group then gets donated to a an exhaust or trash byproduct called homocysteine. Again, you don't need to know the name of it. It's just some trash there. It needs to be carried out. The methyl group gets donated to that 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 trash. And guess what? It starts packaging up really nice and neat to carry it out of the body. But oh, by the way, it not only carries it out, it forms it, conforms it into something that's very, very useful. And that product is called methionine. And that useful product, methionine, gets repurposed and it gets put back into uh, the production of serotonin and norepinephrine, which are our neurotransmitters that help us avoid depression and anxiety and help us feel good and have normal emotions and not have mood swings. So now let's talk about the minion that's not so helpful, the, the mischievous little minion. And he comes across and he's not carrying a methyl group. And all of a sudden we're left with this pile of trash here that can't get carried out because the minion didn't do its job. It didn't bring the methyl group in. And all of a sudden we've got this trash that keeps building up, building up, building up, and the body's got to do something with it. So it converts it into this even worse trash byproduct called acetyl homocysteine or SAW, S-A-H. Uh, and it acts like a SAW in metabolic processes in the body. Over 380 metabolic processes in the body, this particular product will shut down. And, um, and we don't want it hanging around. So you see how one little bitty thing like methylation can set a whole half cascade of events, good or bad. If we're not methylating, it's bad. If we're, we are methylating, it's good. And, and the problem that we run into when we're talking about direct consumer genetic test is, they, is that there are five phases of methylation. And these direct to consumer companies only check one phase of that methylation pathway. So it's not uncommon to have someone like yourself, Tracy, that will come through the program and they'll say, oh, well, I've already had 23 me tests done. I know I'm a really good methylator. And I'll say, well, we need to look at all five phases of the methylation pathway. And then we look at all five phases of the methylation pathway. We do the calculations and we find out that this person is methylating at a very low rate meaning they're not able to take the trash out. And that's just one of many things. That was one example. Uh, methylation mm -hmm. is also involved in detoxification and mitochondrial health, ener energy production for mitochondria. So if we're not methylating, it's not good for us at all. And it's the reason why people will commonly go to their primary care, their psychiatrist, their OBGYN, and they'll say things like, I have low energy and I don't know what's going on or I have brain fog and I don't know what's going on. Um, I can't tell you uh, why, but I don't think my antidepressant, the fifth one that I've tried is, is not working. It's just not working. And it's because they're not treating the root cause. They're just putting band-aids on things. But when mm -hmm. we look at this person's genetics and we start figuring out, okay, this little switch, you, know, you had mentioned switches a minute ago, mm -hmm. This switch is a bad switch and it's cut on. Well, how can we cut that switch off? Okay, well, we can do this, this, and this to cut that switch off. Well, let's do that. Boom. And we cut that switch off. But then we identify over here, uh, there's some good switches, but there's a problem. They're cut off and they should be cut mm -hmm. on. So what can we do to cut the good switches on? Well, we can do this and this. So let's implement those things to cut those good switches on. And before you know it, you have a person that's saying, wow, my mood is better. I'm thinking more clearly. I have more energy and those types of things. And, mm -hmm. and that's just one example with methylation. So I hope that answered your question. 
Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I'm excited to hear that, um, you know, if, if very soon you're going to be bringing out, you know, this information for youngsters so that parents can yeah. get this, uh, you know, get this testing done. And then we come at things from a, a completely different angle, an angle of actually knowing and understanding, yep. which I really, really love. Um, I want to talk about, you know, one of the things that I think you've done uniquely well, and, and there's this, um, and it's now a proprietary system that you have called the, the Genesis zone and looking at those five key um mm. you know areas uh, those five key zones let's talk and, and share with everybody you know what those five key zones are because when i started to understand those and when you sort of explained how it how you broke everything down and how you came mm -hmm. up with these five different areas was like oh but aha, uh -huh, I get it now. And then for me, again, personally, being able to understand, all right, well, this is the, these are the, you know, my primary and my secondary zone that I really need to focus on that are going to give me, let's call it the biggest bang for my buck, so to mm -hmm. speak, um, yep. that will kind of start that domino effect, not one over, like you're talking about the whole methylation side of things. You know, we knock that over and it just starts to knock over a whole lot of other dominoes. So yep. what are, let's talk about what are the five zones that we um, initially focus on predominantly in the uh, in the gene hack boot camp yep so the five zones are brain body sleep energy and immune now uh, you may be thinking well duh that's obvious those are kind of pillars of health well they are pillars of health but the the challenge is is okay so, I mean when I when I when I discovered this I didn't want to come up with these pillars of on my own okay I wanted to um, uh, figure out from the actual information, the data that I had in my hands, years worth of patient charts. I wanted to understand why patients came to see me. Uh, so I hired a research assistant and I had the research assistant start go combing through the charts and putting data into an Excel spreadsheet. And um, when, and, and it took me about, it took me almost three years to comb through the data and tease everything out and create the questionnaire that I'm about to mention to you that, that Tracy's already uh, spoken about. Uh, and and what, what popped to the surface was these five zones, brain, body, sleep, energy, and immune. Those were the reasons that people were, they were those were the areas people were having challenges and they didn't quite know how to articulate it. So I decided that I would create a questionnaire. And in that questionnaire, um, uh, it's it's a it's around 139 questions. It hits about 389 data points over over the that entire questionnaire. And the boot camp we do a shorter version of that because it's just too detailed to to teach and go through in the boot camp. So we do a shorter version of that, a light version, uh, which is 60 questions. It's still kind of heavy, but it, it's a, a 60 60 mm -hmm. question questionnaire. And once you get through the questionnaire, you understand which of your zones is the primary zone of focus. Now, that primary zone of focus then becomes the one domino that we're going to topple. So what I did at that point is I figured out which, which particular genetic uh, test that we needed to run or we needed to look at in order to topple that one domino and which blood laboratory test that we needed to look at in order to topple that one domino. Uh, many times I, I don't do as much blood lab as I used to, because once we get the genetics in place, I find that people are in a really good spot. Uh, it could be that about 53% of my, my clients are wellness seekers. They're not coming in with known health issues, but 53% uh, wellness seekers, about 47%. Uh, have some known issue. Um, and even the ones that are wellness seekers, this is what's the most amazing thing. They come in and they say, I don't have any problems. I just want to make sure that all my T's are crossed and all my I's are dotted. Um, and I still have them fill out the questionnaire. Well, they fill out the questionnaire and we uncover some things that they didn't quite realize was going on. And we still start there. We trust the questionnaire. Um, it's really interesting that around 80% of people that come through have a disconnect for the reasons why they're coming through to get genetic testing and what the questionnaire actually shows is going on. So that's something that was really interesting early on that I found. And, and I was like, I'm just going to trust it 
that it's still right. This is still the place that we need to start. And when we start with that one domino, that primary zone that's out of balance, whether it be brain or body or sleep or energy or immune, when we start with that one domino, I, I frequently find we, we may have to go to the second domino, the second zone that's out of balance. But typically we don't have to go past that because once you topple those two dominoes, the rest of them fall into line and everything kind of mm -hmm. smooths out. So it's just um, it, I had to create that that questionnaire out of necessity because the first clients that I worked with, um, I, I got to be honest with you, it was cumbersome. Uh, they were presenting with a, a whole host of either. I don't know why I'm here. I'm just doing this for health reasons. Or they had a plethora of, of symptoms that they were presenting with. Mm -hmm. Either one of those case scenarios, if you've ever been in clinical practice, is kind of like, where do you start? So yeah. um, and, 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 and that questionnaire helps be able to hone in with absolute certainty on where you need to start. And what we found is this, those clients that were early and they went through without the questionnaire, you know, we would get good results in, you know, four, five, six months after we got the questionnaire in place and we got really dialed into exactly where to start. We were getting results within three to 12 weeks, depending on the person and what was going on with them. Uh, so it's a drastic uh, speeded up process when you start with that questionnaire and you get laser focused on what you want to do. But, you know, Tracy, on this show, you talk about a lot of topics, but you interview a lot of business people and they will tell you if you want to get a task accomplished, you've got to be laser focused on what you're going to what you're going to do, who you're who you're going to be talking to, the message you're going to be speaking. And the same is true in medicine. We have to be laser focused on what we need to focus on in order to make all the other dominoes fall. And that's what this questionnaire does. That's the importance of the Genesis zones, those five zones, is it gives us that direction on where to go. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, it's kind of, I mean, what I've loved about um, the program, Brian, is that, you know, initially you'd think, gosh, do I need to know a lot about genetics? Like, is am I actually going to understand all of this stuff? But you've got a really um, great way of being able to break this down and give fantastic analogies to make it all make a lot of sense. So as um, as somebody, like I said, who doesn't have that medical background, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm very logical and methodical about what I do. And, and um, you know, so I can I can, I'm a pretty good learner. So, you know, understanding, going through that program and then taking the time to actually understand it. I even said to my husband, boy, you know, boy if I'd known that, like if I'd actually been um, exposed to some of this stuff, maybe 20 or 30 years ago when I was starting out, I, I quite possibly would have gone down that medical path because it's mm. been so interesting and fascinating, but more so because it's your own, you know, when you're, <laughs> when you're looking at it from that point of view when you're looking at your own stuff boy oh boy you you want to be and ought to be um very interested and laser yep. focused on it yep. so once we've kind of looked at these five um the five genesis zones at that top level then we start to break things down right we're looking at then there's like seven um, micro zones within that that we start to <laughs> look at and and um funnily enough i mean you guys we probably will rattle off some of these um some of these names today and you'll be like what the heck are they on about um, it's okay because I thought that too when he started rattling off, you know, methylation and um, mitochondria and you know, blah blah blah. And I'm like, what, what, what? Um, but as you can, as as Brian continued to to explain things and and share how things worked and how our bodies work throughout the boot camp and then obviously through the advanced program, um, you know, you do become uh, very very. Uh, knowledgeable you knowledgeable. know you become knowledgeable on the on that on that particular subject i'm going to tell you too that um one of the the other things that i think has happened for me that certainly wasn't on my agenda at all but i would say that growing up um you know one of the things that i didn't particularly like about myself was i had terrible skin as a teenager um and my hair it just was um thin and uh, wispy and just 
just, you know, kind of like wouldn't, it didn't used to grow very fast. And just very recently, I mean, in fact, I've got my hair down today, but, um, you know, my skin and the number of compliments or comments that I've had about, oh, your skin's looking really good. And oh my God, your hair's grown really long. Uh, it's it's all these things that I've learned through the uh, the Genesis Zone program, you know, doing the boot camp and then uh, then the advanced program and, and understanding what's going on with with said body and genetics and what are some of the vitamins, the minerals and the lifestyle changes and the health habits that I need to, to change uh, to make an impact to optimize my health. And these are some of the, the um, I suppose, ad additional benefits that have come from that, that I didn't join the program for, but have been really nice, I'm going to say surprises uh, throughout throughout <laughs> the process. So thank you for that. I want to um I want to go down the path of of those that are watching now that you know our health is the one thing that we need to take care of you can't yeah. you know we can you need to look after yourself because no matter we're no good to anybody not to ourselves not to our kids not to our family members if we don't keep ourselves in good health and so therefore you know making making that a priority and like you mentioned the unlock show i have lots and lots of um, high performing uh, business people the show is very vast and the, the types of topics that i talk about because it is about unlocking the very best of you living your life unlocked whether it be with your family your business your life right mm -hmm. and to do all of that you can't do any of it you can't have a you know great family relationships if you don't have your health you can't create an amazing business if you're unwell all the time you know you can't create an amazing life and experience all the things that you want to if you are not if you're you're unwell so looking after ourselves is of utmost importance and particularly in the in the uh, you know the, the current climate that we are in so I want to I want to talk about you know when with the boot camp that you're doing and i mean i'm i'm a absolute sold on it shout from the rooftops people should absolutely <laughs> do it for your own for you for you like I, I couldn't be doing the show without saying to people you need to take care of yourself because it's the only mm. way you live an unlocked life um, and the way you do that is first and foremost through you know have it being really healthy and and creating a healthy lifestyle so who should join the boot camp? Like, who is it for? So they should join this if you can, yeah. you can finish that sentence. No, that. no, no. Great, great <laughs> question. Um, I will tell you who gravitates towards it naturally. It's people who have either A, been stuck in, on, on the medical merry-go-round. They've been to multiple places and been told, quote, unquote, everything's normal. So they've been told that so many times that they're frustrated and they're ready to just finally get answers. Um, they are tenacious. They don't give up and they're always seeking those answers. And a lot of those people end up in my wheelhouse and we end up working with them and we're helping them greatly. The, the other person the, that, that shows up is that person who is kind of that, that biohacker. And, and I say that term loosely because it's really, a posh term to use these days. Uh, and it means a lot of things to a lot of people. To me, biohackers fall on a spectrum. I've got people that are really interested and in take ownership in their health. They're not quite sure what they need to do, but they're making headway and they're doing some things mm -hmm. right. Um, and then I've got people that are extreme biohackers that are, are way out here on this end that are doing all kinds of alternative stuff. And, and, and that's great, but they're biohackers nonetheless. They're just on one end of the spectrum or other or somewhere in between. So those are the two clients that come in, those people that are, are frustrated with this medical merry-go-round and they're ready to finally get some answers uh, versus the people that are the, the biohackers somewhere on that spectrum. And they're really interested in their health. Uh, both of those people are. They take ownership for their health. And they're just wanting to make sure that, okay, I've got all my T's crossed and all my I's dotted uh, so I can be the best me that I can possibly be. Because as, as you said, Tracy, uh, when we do that, 
we function well in our families, we function well in our social relationships, we function well if, if we own a business and the businesses that we run and own, uh, we function well if, if we work for somebody else, we function at our highest and best good and we're more productive and we earn more money and, and those types of things. Um, so health is critical for all of that. If we don't have our health, mm -hmm. We don't have anything. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the most amazing things is this, you know, your computer has one, your car has one, your washer and your dryer, uh, your, your hair dryer, for goodness sake, has one and, and their owner's manuals. Uh, we all have these owner's manuals laying around everywhere, cluttering stuff, or either we've thrown them away because we never read them. But the one thing that does not have an owner's manual that you own very intimately is your human body. The closest thing I've found to an owner's manual is epigenetics because it dials down to the base layer of who we are and says, this, this is who you are. And this is how the ship needs to run. And if you flip this switch this way and this switch this way and this switch this way, this ship is going to run in, in a straight line. It's going to run really good. And you're not going to have the issues that your parents had, your grandparents had, your siblings are having. And, 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 and granted, I, I can't make promises like that. There's a lot of factors involved, mm -hmm. but that ship is going to run a heck of a lot better if those things are in working order than if they're not in working order. And, mm -hmm. and sadly it, it gets ignored for whatever reason, maybe because it's so new. Um, I think we're probably about 15 years away from maybe mainstream medicine taking hold of this and really running with it. My job, my my mission is to shorten that curve and and get it in as many hands of as many health professionals as possible. In the meantime, I'm going to help as many people along the way as I possibly can mm -hmm. uh, to to reach that highest and best good for 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 themselves and for their communities. Because ultimately, that's what it's about: is making this planet mm -hmm. a better place to live. Absolutely, and you know, I applaud you for for doing that. And it's not always easy, you know, people doing this stuff that's on the the cutting edge and having to go out and wanting to to really make a real difference, not just in your local community, mm. but in on a on a global scale. Like what you're doing is making going to make a huge impact on people yeah. all over the world. And and it's um, you know, I'm just lucky enough to have been part to. Be part of that right from uh, from its inception. So I, I want to make sure that everybody knows where to go to get. Um, it, as we mentioned earlier, Brian has the next round of his boot camp opening. So I can vouch that it's it it really is a game changer. And when Brian talks about you know having that owner's manual for yourself, I mean I've got mine on my phone. I mean I can I can look through it. I know exactly. Oh okay. Well even. You know, for example, if um, if I had to go and have antidepressants, which I don't, by the way, but if I did, you know, it, I would know which ones I almost which ones I should and shouldn't take. And in fact, I would know that based on my genetics, that antidepressants are probably not a great thing for me. Thankfully, I don't have to have those, but that that would be, that has um, has also shown up. So some of the things that I see that are being being, I suppose, blanketly handed out to people because they just get the diagnosis of the masses is what I'm going to call it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in this case, you know, it's very, very individualized. So I want to make sure that you guys know where to go to uh, to get yourself on the next round of the boot camp. So head on over to drbriangbrown.com forward slash gene hack. So if you go there, that will get you in. Uh, you'll be able to register for the next gene hack boot camp. Uh, and if I'm right, Brian, at the moment it's $47. I know that you've um, right. the pricing is uh, is going to go up very, very shortly. So for $47, guys, it's a it's an absolute, you know, it's an absolute no-brainer because, you know, to get that kind of, you know, let's call it the owner's manual of yourself, so that you can make some informed decisions and be really empowered with what you know about your health. Um, forty-seven dollars is absolutely nothing. So I would highly recommend that you do the first round of the boot camp, and then, of course, if you decide, like I did, that hey, my health is you know, it's important. I want to learn this. I want to go further. I want to understand more. Then you may well decide that you want to um, you want to do some more work with Brian and and uh, delve a little bit deeper. But I would highly recommend you do the boot camp 
at the very least. So head on over drbriangbrown.com forward slash gene hack. Brian, is there anything else that um, I, I know once they get inside the boot camp, guys, I don't want to give you away all of, you know, kind of spill the beans on everything because I want you to also have a really awesome experience, which you will when you get inside of the boot camp. Um, I want to leave some things as a bit of a surprise for you so that you can see, right, you know, this is how it works. These are some of the things that Brian's got in there. But um, I know you will be pleasantly, not surprised, but just really happy about what you see inside of there and what it is that you're learning um, for yourself because mm. it really truly does make a big difference and I must admit I probably am you know feel like a bit of a broken record because I'm I talk about it almost every day with somebody um, you know I'm talking about you know what I've been up to because they ask you know what, what have you been doing you, you look different I'm like do I yeah your your hair's different your eyes are different you're and I'm like really okay yeah so that's what um that's what people are saying and and i can only put it down the only thing i've changed is that i've now done this boot camp i now understand you know a lot more about my genetics and i'm making some changes accordingly so yep. um yeah the, the proof is in the pudding so that's what uh when does the gene hack boot camp start is probably a good question to ask right now so those that want to join they could head on over there right now yep it starts on monday the 27th. Yep. And they can All head right, on over so right now and register. There you go, guys. So we're, time is of the essence. You need to get in there. Um, you've only got a few days left to register and get yourself onto the next round of the boot camp. Uh, and then, you know, before it goes away, it's been quite some time since Brian did his last one. So if you don't get in this time, you know, you may have to wait some time before uh, the next boot camp actually opens. Because mm -hmm. do you know when that might be, Brian? Um, we're currently talking with the team about that. I'm not sure when, when not the next sure. round of yeah. boot camp will open up. Um, we will probably at some point after the new year, open it up, um, in, in perpetuity doing about two boot camps a month. Um, but we're still discussing the details on that. Well, we'll see how that all goes. But like we said, this is um this is an opportunity for people to get in before Christmas. And honestly, this is the time to do it. With the stuff yeah, that's going definitely. on, you want to get in and do it now so that you can make informed decisions. And that's what this is. To me, that is the biggest thing. It's, you know, all the other stuff, the, you know, your hair's mm -hmm. growing better, my skin feels better. That's all nice additional things but the fact yep. that i can make an informed decision about things um is is the primary reason or the most important thing that has happened uh for me through doing the boot camp and then uh then the the ongoing accelerator program so i want to I say mean, thanks for so, it, sorry go ahead it, it didn't mean to interrupt but i mean if you think about it today is the 23rd of september we have just over 90 days until Christmas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not long after that, the new year. So talking about a way to develop some tremendous momentum going into the new year is start understanding your genetics and getting your genetics fixed. That, that is, that is critical, I think, and a perfect way to start 2022, because let's face it, uh, the past couple of years have been a little stressful and challenging yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And um, what better way to get a handle on that than to start taking care of you, putting yourself first and, and, and making changes from the genetic level up. I'm actually so pleased that um, that you've mentioned this and in, in sort of the, in our wrap up today, because, you know, everybody, I mean, and nowadays, you know, one of the things that I'm super passionate about is actually helping people create their own, you know, their own businesses, their own lifestyles, their, that, in a way that they're able to be in control of that. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, our health and our well-being, and you know, how well our um, our brain uh, functions, all of those things become are critical to yeah. to the way in which you're able to do that. Um, and and you know, again, with this current climate, you want to be able to have as much control over oneself as we possibly can, mm -hmm. right? So we want to make sure that we hang on to that and uh, and continue to move forward with a level of, um, let me say, our ownership with what we do. Yep. All right, guys. Well, I want to say um, today's show, I mean, I 
like I've mentioned to you at the beginning, I was going to share with you, you know, my experience and I can't recommend the program uh, more. Like I mentioned, I want to shout it from the rooftops. I want to talk about it all the time because it's, it is such an important thing to do. And for our Unlock viewers, for you guys, my job is to help you live your life unlocked, live the best possible life you can with whatever that means across your business, your family and your life. And today's show is, is the genesis of it. It's your health. <laughs> So please make sure that we take care of that because that is the thing that is going to really power and propel you forward uh, now and well into the future. You want to live a long and healthy life and be successful while you're at it. Yep. All right, guys, I want to say thank you very much. Thanks so much for being here today, Brian. I always love uh, having a conversation with you about this stuff because it's fascinating. And uh, no doubt I would love to have you back on the show again a little bit further down the track and we can talk more about uh, genetics and, and taking Absolutely. care and optimizing, optimizing our health uh, for a better future. All yep. right, guys, so thanks very much. I'm going to see you guys again on Wednesday. I'll be back again uh, with another episode of The Unlock Show and I've got another amazing guest joining joining us on Wednesday. But I want to say thanks very much for joining and uh, bye for now. See you guys next week. All right. Bye.